The church is so overflowing with joy because Jesus has risen that it celebrates every day this week in the same way that it celebrates Easter Day. So if you hear in some of the prayers, it talks about today being Easter Day. But we might wonder, and I think the apostles did too, that they might have wondered, well, now that Jesus is risen from the dead, how does that make my life different? How does it change things? Now, even though Jesus had said that Jesus has already appeared to the apostles two times before he appeared to them again in the gospel today, I think especially Peter, who was supposed to be the leader of the apostles, he really wasn't sure what he was supposed to do yet. Maybe he was confused and maybe maybe a little bit discouraged because Jesus rising from the dead hadn't changed everything that he thought would change. For example, Peter was still the same sinful Peter that makes mistakes. And the Romans, the soldiers, they were still in charge. Even the religious leaders now that were in Jerusalem, they didn't like the apostles and and were maybe he thought they would do the same thing to them as they did to Jesus. And so Peter might be thinking to himself, I don't really know what to do, so I'm going to go fishing. Because he was a fisherman. But then... After he goes fishing, Jesus appears again. And he gives Peter and the apostles the courage, the strength to be his disciples. And then we see in the the first reading, which actually comes after the gospel, we see Peter has the courage to, when he's asked about, you know, why is he preaching about Jesus, then he's willing to tell those leaders that, that Jesus they crucified, he's God. And he's the only one by which we can be saved. And that's pretty courageous. So as we also try to be disciples following the risen Jesus, like Peter, sometimes we can get discouraged too. It's not always easy to follow God in a world that doesn't always love God. And so we can sometimes feel discouraged or feel like giving up. But Jesus always wants to be there to give us that courage that we need. And he did this many times throughout history. Back in the 1600s, when the love of God had kind of grown cold and people were filled with fear and discouragement, maybe they thought about giving up too. But Jesus appeared to St. Margaret Mary and gave to St. Margaret Mary devotion to the Sacred Heart that we've been learning about on every first Friday, like today. Then later on in the 1930s, Uh, which was right after one of the big world wars where millions of people died, Jesus appeared again. He appeared in Poland to St. Faustina, who was a sister there in Poland. And St. Faustina, she had a great love of Jesus in the Sacred Heart, and while she was praying in front of Jesus in the Eucharist, Jesus appeared to her and asked her to spread his devotion to his divine mercy. Because I'm sure Jesus knew that people were discouraged because of the war that had happened. And Jesus knew that, unfortunately, there were more wars that were going to come. And many things, even to today, bad things happening in the world. So sometimes we can wonder when we see those things, did it make any difference for Jesus to rise from the dead? Yes, it does. That's why we need devotion to Jesus' sacred heart and his divine mercy. So you've probably seen images like the Divine Mercy that we have here. And I'm talking about Divine Mercy today because on Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And the Divine Mercy really kind of fits in with the Sacred Heart. They kind of go together, those two devotions. And really because Jesus only has one heart. His sacred heart and his merciful heart is the same, the same one. Jesus told St. Faustina when he came to her, he said, My heart overflows with great mercy for souls. If only they could understand it is for them that the blood and water flowed from my heart as a font overflowing with mercy. So when we look at the sacred heart picture like the one we have enthroned in the school, we see Jesus wanting to give his heart to us. And when we look at the divine mercy image, we see not the heart, but we see those rays of light, the blood and water that represents Jesus' mercy that he wants to give to us, coming out from the place where his heart is. 
So they go together. Jesus also told Faustina that, that one of the greatest things that get in the way of following him as a disciple is discouragement. When we get discouraged and feel like giving up. I've used that word a few times, but do you know where that word comes from? Discouragement, or what we should have is courage. Discouragement. Courage. It comes from a Latin word, core. You probably don't know what that means. But the Latin word core means heart. It means heart. So if we get discouraged and we feel like giving up, it means that we've lost heart. And we need courage. And in order to get courage, we turn to Jesus' heart. He gives us his heart. It helps us to follow him. It's his heart that we get, especially when we go to the Eucharist. We receive Jesus in Holy Communion. So Jesus' heart transforms my heart and your heart to be more like his heart, to be merciful like his heart. And knowing his love and his mercy, then we won't get discouraged when we see bad things happen around us or we have to do hard things. But we'll have courage like Jesus gave to St. Peter and he gave to St. Margaret Mary and he gave to St. Faustina so that we can help other people to know Jesus' great love and mercy that comes from his heart.